this example, I will show you how to use a Smith chart to determine admittances from impedances and also to determine the uh, overall impedance when you put two impedances in parallel. Well, one of the nice features of the Smith chart is that you can uh, derive the admittance from the impedance directly by mirroring uh, the value in the Smith chart. I will show you how this works uh, with this example. We have two impedances. The two impedances are in parallel. That means we have to add the admittances. That's why we need to know the admittance value. Um, in our example, my ZL is 10 ohms plus J25 ohms, and my capacitor has an impedance of uh, minus 40 J ohms. We normalize these two values and we get uh, 0.2 plus 0.5 J and for the capacitor we get a normalized impedance of minus 0.8 J. Let's mark these two values in the Smith chart. The load impedance uh, is here. Real part is 0.2. Imaginary part is 0.5. That makes the point to sit here. The capacitor is purely imaginary. That means uh, located on the edge of the Smith chart. Since it's a capacitor, it's uh, negative and negative values are here in the lower sections, even though the minus sign is not signed, not shown. So we look for the uh, admitting, uh, sorry, for the imaginary part 0.8 with the real part of zero, and that's this value here at minus 0.8. Okay, now we have the two impedances. For these two impedances, I need to know the admittances. The admittance I can find by mirroring my point here over the center to the other side. For that I use my triangle. I have to place it here in the center. Oops. Okay, and now I can uh, use the triangle to mirror my point. Um, we are here at 5.9 centimeters. That makes it on the other side to be 5.9, which is somewhere here. So, so that would be my mirrored point. Let's take a look where it is. So the mirrored point is somewhere at uh, a real part, the circle, which is 0 0.6, 0 0.7. So it's... <coughs> uh, I would say 0.7, something like that. And the real part, uh, sorry, the imaginary part is somewhere here. It's a little bit above uh, 1.7. So let's say about 0.7 uh, plus, uh, sorry, minus 1.7 J. And uh, so the, the value I calculated before is something like that. So I get a Y value, which is 0.68 minus 1.72J. We can read off that point here. So we can repeat the same thing for that point, uh, minus 0.8. Minus 0.8 becomes, oh, well, you can also do it by hand by saying 1 over 0.8 becomes 1.25J plus. So we get Oops. Look at this point here, 1.25J plus. Just mirroring my point about the center. So now we have the two individual values and we can add them up. So before I'm doing that, I give you a trick or a, uh, a new feature. Doing this mirroring is tedious and uh, it's a lot of effort and you can do a lot of things wrong because we have to do it uh, we have to add now the values and then we have to do the mirroring again uh, which is tedious in order to simplify things somebody got the idea to put in addition to the impedance grid to also put an admittance grid in the Smith chart the admittance grid is nothing else but my red chart mirrored about the center, all the lines. So when I turn that on, it looks like this. You see that blue chart now? 
and also the values for it and you get the complete Smith chart now. So the blue grid uh, is the admittance chart which tells you the admittance value. The red chart is the impedance chart which tells you the impedance value and the blue and the red are just mirrored examples of each other. So using that chart I don't need I do not need the mirroring anymore. What I can do is I can just zoom in here Take a look at my, let's make it a bit smaller. So, take a look at my impedance value, which was 0 0.2, 0 0.5 here. And now let's take a look at our blue grid. And in the blue grid, we see it's between 0 0.6 and 0 0.8. Negative, because uh, the blue grid, the negative values are on the upper side. And the real, uh, sorry, the imaginary part is 0.7. It's this thin line. It's a little bit more, so it's 0. Point, sorry, it's 0. Point, uh, uh, sorry, it's 1.7. Let's zoom in again here. So, um, so we have uh, real part, the circle. It's 0. 0.68. Imaginary part is. A little bit more than 1.7 which is this line so it's 1.72 okay that's how we find the value for the load and the value for the the uh, um, admittance chart uh, for the capacitor is very similar the point is here uh, you get plus 1.2 J here, plus 1.4, 1.3 is here, so it's 1.25, we can say. So we can also mark that point here directly with, oops, with 1.25 J. So no mirroring uh, required anymore, which makes things simple. Now, we've found the Y value of the load, we find the Y value of the um, capacitor. Now we can add the two. And I move this over here. I prepared that. So I make it bigger. Now, um, let's make it really big. So capacitor y value is 1.25j. Um, load is 0 0.68 minus 1. 0.72 adding the two together gives me 0.68 minus 0.47 J so that's going to be my red point here now I have to find that point on the admittance chart because it's a Y value it's blue and uh, then I have the point in the Smith chart and when I have the point in the Smith chart I can read off the impedance so my value is 0.68 on the blue chart um, maybe for a second I turn off the impedance grid so you maybe see um, clearer what's going on. Um, so this value here is real part is 0 0.68 which is somewhere is this circle here and the imaginary part is 0 0.47 which is 0.74 here 0.47 is somewhere here um, six sorry one more we have somewhere here no? uh, 0.6 eight so it has to be a little bit more and 0.47 which is here so it's let's make it bigger so 0.68 means between here and 0 0.4 what was it sorry 47 0.47 is somewhere here 0.45 it's 0.5 uh, it's here so so we got a point which is somewhere located here so okay now once we spotted this point we use the Smith chart again, or the, the impedance grid again, and I turned it on again. Oops, sorry, I uh, was the wrong one. Um, 
Philippines grid. So, and now I could turn on for clearance now the admittance grid again. Now we can read up that value here for my impedance, which is real part is about one, a little bit more, and imaginary part is 0.6 something, no? 0 0.67, 0 0.68. So it's um, has to go a little bit more to the left here actually when I compared to my real solution. So we get uh, as a result here a normalized value of 1 plus 0.67j. But this is a normalized value. In order to denormalize we have to multiply it by 50 so this becomes 50 and um, so it's 67, which is again, I have to divide it by 2, it's uh, 35, sorry, it's 30 plus 14, um, 31.4. So that's going to be my final answer. <coughs> of the two impedances put in parallel. We can double check that again using our um, Python tool. Again, I prepared a little bit what's going on here because uh, so my, my ZL is 10 plus 25j my zc is equal to minus 40j and when i put the two in parallel i have to do the famous parallel formula zl times zc over zl plus zc and i just realized i call it z1 sorry Z1, I call it, it's 10 plus 25J. So, and now putting the two together, I get Z2, and Z2 is 49 and 33.8 ohms. And I, for my Smith chart, I calculated 50 plus uh, 31.4J. So, we are very close actually. That's how you put two impedances in parallel. I admit it's not the fastest way of putting two in, uh, impedances in parallel when you have a complex calculator. You can do this within two seconds. However, sometimes you need this step to be performed in the Smith chart. Okay, that uh, completes our session on uh, impedances and admittances in the Smith chart. And we go back to the main lectures.